so Friday, June 10th at the Riff, um, we've put together a, a tribute show, a, a Taylor Hawkins and Foo Fighters tribute show, um, mostly in memoriam of Taylor Hawkins. Um, but as most of the, the uh, Foo Fighters fans know, he passed away in uh, the last month or the last, uh, I believe, four or five weeks now. And so um, we kind of wanted to uh, put it out to the community and find some like-minded musicians that wanted to do a tribute show um, to Taylor because he was such an influential musician um, to the entire industry, not just rock and roll, not just pop, but his reach is, is far and wide. So we put that out to the community um, and I got a couple of um, a couple of veteran musicians to join uh, the effort that we wanted to put through. And we found Walking After Foo and uh, The Wandering Found um, had reached out once we put the event out and jumped on the show. And it's, it's, um, it's been a great effort since. Gotcha. Um, very cool. So uh, what were you guys doing when you heard the news uh, about Taylor Hawkins? Chris, I'll, I'll let you speak. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, so I was actually at a horror convention in, uh, in Ohio and my girlfriend, we were just sitting there and she's like, I got some really bad news. And I was like, what? And then she told me and I, it, it devastated me really. Um, it was, yeah, it, it was already, you know, such a shock, um, and to just kind of like find out it just, out of nowhere that he had died was insane um we had actually started this tribute band walking after foo a month before taylor passed and um yeah once we heard about this we were kind of on the same mind of keone as we wanted to do something um to honor him and then i saw their post and you know it all just kind of came together from there yeah uh, peyton yeah, for me, I think I actually saw it the morning after it happened. And it was one of those things where so many rumors are spread on the internet. You're like, that didn't happen. No. And then you see that it was actually true. And it's one of those things that kind of took a bit to hit me, uh, just with Taylor being a huge inspiration as a drummer for me, um, coming to terms with like, he's not going to create anything new anymore to influence me. And that was kind of something that hit me harder than I thought it would. <laughs> yeah, and as I'm looking, and I'll, I'll weigh in here too, um, his actual death was on March uh, 25th um, of this year. So it was a little bit earlier than, than I had remembered, but um, we were actually uh, rehearsing um, a, a different show at the time uh, when we found that out. And I think it was a post to Reddit that had um, exploded and kind of like what, Peyton was saying, you know, so many false posts and, and things happen, especially with celebrity news, you know, and Taylor and, and really Dave and the Foo Fighters and everybody have been such a staple to the rock and roll and to the pop community for so long that it's, it, it was unbelievable. It really was because Taylor was only 50. He was 50 when this happened. And it was, it just honestly was, was, I, I don't know any other way to put it. It was, it was unbelievable. It really was after seeing him, I mean, all the way back in like the mid nineties, late nineties with Alanis Morissette and just the amazing things that he's touched. You know, we've seen him in the community for so many years and just to see the shock of him gone is, is just something that, um, like the other guy said, it, it, it's just, it really is. It's unbelievable. It's a shock. So. Um, yeah. And I understand that, uh, this, uh, tribute show, uh, the proceeds will be going to someone special. Yep, um, we're actually internally debating on the final charity to donate to now. Um, a couple of ones that we've talked about, um, one being Taylor's uh, son. He has a, uh, a band that supports a, a fund for autism awareness, and uh, that is all, that's a possibility for the, uh, the donations. But ultimately, we want to donate to something in Taylor's name and something that Taylor would have wanted um, to donate to, whether that's directly for Taylor and his family, or that's for a cause that that uh, Taylor believed in. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I recall hearing the news uh, pretty much whenever um, it hit Facebook and it was within like the first minute I just happened to, to hit it. And 
I totally thought that um, it was just a ploy for their like new new album that was about to come out, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an absolute or their movie <laughs> or that. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, with the with rock music kind of being in kind of the background now um, in terms of, of pop music, the Foo Fighters have kind of been one of those staples that have been around for so long that's still keeping, you know, rock music in, in, in popular music. Um, what do you, what do you guys think, you know, what will change? Uh, I mean, obviously uh, Dave Grohl and, and, and Taylor were very close to each other. What, what do you think the, the future holds for, for them and maybe for pop rock? I think that's a, I mean, that's a pretty good question. Chris, did you want to answer there? Uh, whatever. I was just going to say, you know, like, you know, that is a good question. I think about that. And, you know, the first, when I first heard of the news, you know, of, you know, Taylor passing, it, it made me think back to like when I first heard that Dave was starting the Foo Fighters and um, how, you know, in my mind, I was like, who, who the heck's gonna play drums for Dave Grawl you know like and <laughs> it was it was such a an insane thing to think about at that time and then after you know hearing you know Taylor on the drums the first time I saw them live was we we're talking about this earlier it was in 1997 at uh, the Blue Note in Columbia very small room and Taylor was on drums and that was the moment it hit me I was like that guy that guy is gonna fill the shoes and then when I heard that he has I was like well who's gonna fill Taylor's shoes you know it's like I don't even think Dave Grawl could do it at this point you know it's like he's such a machine and such a beast of a drummer that yeah I it you know I hate to think about it but it's it's I feel like it's gonna be a long time before the Foo Fighters can get that back together you know to get that cohesiveness of a band without like Taylor there to kind of be the you know the backbone of the band and to provide, you know, that strength that, you know, not a lot of other drummers could do. I mean, sure, you could get several drummers to fill in, but have like an actual real replacement for him. I, I, I feel that's going to take a long time. You can also all feel the same. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll agree with with Chris. Um, Taylor was such a driving force of the Foo Fighters and it, I feel for Dave. I, I feel for his wife, Allison. I feel for, uh, you know, everybody that was involved in that project from start to finish. And just to echo Chris's sentiment, I, I just, I honestly don't see how they could continue doing the Foo Fighters without him under the Foo Fighters name. You know, of course, Dave is an amazing musician will, and will always be an amazing musician. And then, you know, he's got so many things to give to the community even going forward. But yeah, it, it's hard to to visualize what what they can do even in the months you know it's so new and raw for everybody so um you know it's hard to visualize it really is um so kind of going back to the show uh what what who are you hoping to to, uh, to come to this show and uh what what can people kind of expect Peyton yeah I mean I I don't think there's any limitations who should show up young old all in the in-between um even if you like know one Foo Fighters song show up you'll probably hear the one that you know uh we plan on playing a lot of the hits some stuff of uh Taylor's personal catalog too um but yeah anybody and everybody um so are we are we hearing nothing but Foo Fighters and Taylor Hawkins type music? Are we going to hear some original stuff? And then how did each band kind of coordinate who's going to play what, or will there be overlap? I'll answer that one. And that's a, that's a good question. And it yeah. was, it was an effort um, to, to obviously figure out in the beginning, but um, for the show uh, you will hear Taylor Hawkins and, and Foo Fighters music and Dave Grohl's music um, pretty much exclusively because this is a Taylor Hawkins Foo Fighters tribute show. Um, I don't believe there'll be any original music from, from any of the three groups, mostly out of respect for the tribute event. Um, but it is an all ages show and the riff is an all ages venue, as long as, um, you have a legal guardian under 21. So we welcome, um, everybody of all ages. And, and just like Peyton said, the Foo Fighters, if you want to look at it from really a purely objective point of view, if you are not a Foo Fighters fan, a fanatic. The Foo Fighters are, have reached a level of fame that is 
that is rare in the rock and roll industry or in the pop industry. Some people have have equated them to the the Beatles of this generation. You know, there there almost isn't a soul on the planet that doesn't know at least one Foo Fighters song. So uh, just like Peyton said, if you know one Foo Fighters song, if you've ever jammed out to to any of their hits, uh, even just a casual listener on the radio, come to the show, come see who Taylor was, come see what music uh, he, he wrote, what music they wrote together and the amazing things that they gave uh, the music community and just the world in general. Um, but yeah, we encourage everybody, everybody to come.